Am I the best dancer in the world? But I shall be the best. Of course you will, dear heart, with a very few more lessons. I shall be the best everything. Heavens. Hmm? Someone's still here. Who is it? <laughs> the worst everything. Fetch me a whip. Bertrand. Uncle Claudius? <laughs> Uncle Claudius, did you enjoy the party? <laughs> did you enjoy the party so much that you got drunk? Uh, yes. Why did you get drunk? Uh, to celebrate. Celebrate what? Uh, Birth your daughter. Tell me, Claudius, to what do you attribute the fact that my wife has given birth to a child only one month after our marriage? Divine powers. Whose divine powers? Yours. Well, Caligula. Yours. Oh! Caesar. The great Caesar. Uncle Claudius, your face is dirty. You need a bath in the Tiber. Uh, Gods! I beg you. I shall have you thrown in the Tiber to clean you. Uh, great divine Caesar. <laughs> Carry my uncle away to his room. You've been dancing. I shall be even greater than Easter. Come to bed. Is she mine? My child? Yes. How do you know? I know. How? She's got your temper already. We'll call her Drusilla. All right. After my sister. You know that I loved my sister, Drusilla. Yes. You know that I raped all three of my sisters. Everyone knows that. You know that I killed Drusilla. I can believe it. You know that I may kill you without warning at any moment from now on. Yes, darling, I know. Sisonia, why do you love me? <laughs> because I do. I shall have you put to the torture until you confess why you love me. You'll get the same answer. What answer? <laughs> Caligula. I'm a good deal older than you. I'm losing my looks. I have three children by my first husband. Why do you love me? Same answer. No answer. No reason. I just do.
The Emperor. Gentlemen, I gather that we are in some trifling financial difficulty and that you, the wisest and indeed the richest men in Rome, have come to offer your advice. The great Caesar. My dear Pomponius, are you the spokesman? Uh, as consul, Of I... course. You and your colleague are my masters. My colleague Sentius and I are deeply honoured. My dear Pomponius, my dear Sentius, come here and kiss my hand. Yes, Caesar. I am deeply honoured that you are deeply honoured. Now prostrate yourselves. Caesar, I... On the floor. And let me tell you what you are about to decide. Under the reign of my great-grandfather, the divine Augustus, it became customary for the leading men of Rome, when making their wills, to bequeath some portion of their estate to the emperor, as a sign of loyalty and love. Isn't that so? Uh, oh, yes, that is so, so indeed. So Under my predecessor, Tiberius, the custom continued, but was not so strictly observed. Isn't that so? Uh, they uh, assuredly, Caesar. 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 The traditions of Rome are dear to my heart. I intend that this one shall be revived in its full glory. Gentlemen, what are you doing on the floor? Stand up at once, you look ridiculous. By means of the following decrees. First, all Romans of wealth and rank who wished to make a bequest to the Emperor Tiberius but were prevented by his death shall now make that bequest to me. Second, all wills admitted to probate in the last ten years of men of wealth and rank, which do not contain a suitable bequest to the emperor, shall be declared invalid and the entire property seized on behalf of the crown. Pomponius Sentius, do you agree? Oh, yes, we do agree. Yes, 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 yes. Third, though this hardly needs the force of law, since we are simply reviving an ancient and noble tradition, all wills of men of wealth and rank made from this moment on will of course contain a bequest to the emperor. The size of the bequest will be taken as a measure of loyalty and love. Those who truly love me will bequeath me their entire estate. Those who only half love me will bequeath me only half. Those who love me only a little will be able to show their disloyalty, in which case they will be penalized by the confiscation of their estate. Gentlemen, I take it that you agree and that you yourselves will set an example. Oh, yes, Caesar, we agree, Caesar. In other words, whatever we do, we're ruined. Who was it who spoke? Anesius? Yes. That man's a traitor. Kill him. As you see, I have enemies. No, Caesar, no, How can I not have enemies doing what I do? I shall revive one other tradition. At the beginning of my reign, I abolished the charge of treason. I was too kind. Since I have enemies, the charge is restored. Any form of disloyalty will be punished by instant death. Uh, but Caesar, we are loyal. We pray for your safety. We love you, Caesar. Thank you, gentlemen. Go home and make your wills. The audience is over. Caesar. 
thank you, sweetest. You and your darling boys were absolutely lovely. See you, Claudius. What are you doing here? Trying to keep out of trouble. As bad as that? How long have you been returned from Syria? Less than a day. One more day and you won't need to ask. Caligula has summoned me to render an account of my governorship. God help you. Why, I've been a very good governor. Mm -hmm. Sir, Caligula doesn't like people to be very good at things. Ah. Except Nista. Who? He's teaching Caligula to dance. I've stayed alive because I'm a fool. Should I be a fool too? Difficult for you. You see, not only am I a fool, but I'm poor as well. You're rich. Yes, yes, I gather that's a cry. If Caligula runs short of money, he kills another wealthy man. He's just returned from a trip through Gaul, killing carefully selected millionaires. And the Senate? What's left of them voted him an ovation. For his victory over the millionaires? Over the ocean. What? Oh, he's a... a a great general now, and a great admiral too. He conquered the ocean, single-handed. First time it's been done. He lined up all his troops opposite Britain, obviously going to invade all the troops, all the ships, awaiting one word of command. And then he ordered them to walk along the beaches, picking up shells. Shells, seashells, yeah. as booty, as evidence of his victory, for his triumphal procession through Rome. Twenty wagon loads of seashells. <laughs> you understand, I talk to you here because in the room someone could be listening. Lucius Vitellius. Great Caesar. Lucius? Empress, divine wife and mother. Back from Syria? I flew to obey your command. The winds must have been with you. The winds must have known what you wanted. Did I want you in Rome? Of course. Lucius is an old friend. Old lover? Never. Oh, why not? Caesonia went to bed with every man in Rome before she became my wife. You were talking to someone? Your uncle Claudius. Where is he? Behind a pillar. <laughs> Why? He, like myself, is concerned with survival. <laughs> Caesar. Is it a game? I thought you were good. Well, you disliked the look of my face. Guards. My uncle Claudius is quite right. Take his face away! To oh. his bed. Good night, Caesar. You're clever. I try to imitate... Go to bed, all of you. Except the guards. They tell me you've been a brilliant governor. 
I wouldn't dare to claim the word brilliant. What adjective would you choose to describe yourself? Devoted. Devoted to who? To my twin god. Twin? I have no twin. Forgive me, I failed to explain myself. In accordance with your wishes, your army in Syria, which I had the fortune to command, surprised the Parthian and made an advantageous peace with them. One of the conditions was that they should sacrifice to two images. Your great-grandfather, the divine Augustus, and yourself. Tell me, Lucius, provincial governors make themselves rich. Very rich. How rich are you? As rich as a common mortal could possibly desire. I see no point in denying it. It must be known to you. Guards, since you are neither common nor mortal, you surprise me, Caesar. Great Caesar. Why? By accepting this form of address. Caesar, the family name that means king and more than king when in the East. I've hailed you as God and more than God. Here in Rome, great Caesar, and throughout the empire, you should have temples of your own, a special priesthood, services, sacrifices. Since I already sacrificed to you in the East, may I offer myself as a sacrifice. Come with me. Some nights, when Sisonia is asleep, and the moon's shining like this. I go out in the moonlight and I talk to the moon goddess. She talks to me. The moon goddess is in love with me. I make love to the moon. Can you see? I'm with the moon goddess now. Some nights, some nights she's come to my bed, but now, oh dear, can you see her? Great God, only great gods are permitted to see one another. Um, making love. to the moon. Caligula, my love. Wait! Jupiter, great god of the thunderbolt, 
do something for me. Strike Rome. Strike Rome and flatten it to the ground. What? I must be remembered. My reign must be remembered above all others. What does history remember best of all? A great disaster, a flood, a plague, an earthquake. I want more than that. I want something that has never happened before. A rain of thunderbolts all at one moment. A hundred thousand deaths. You can do it. If you don't, I shall cast you down to hell. Tell me, Callistus. Do you find that he's becoming just a little too strange? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of criticizing the Emperor, even to you. Yes, of course, I do understand. Oh, well. So long as he continues to love us. The conference is over. Caligula, dear thing. Time for dancing. He's to give me your opinion. Which is the greater god, Jupiter or myself? Caligula, sweetheart. What a difficult question. Gods! Why, well, I mean, you're both Seize so great. that man. But of course, you, yourself, to Strip me. him, bind him to that statue, you're, and flog you're him. You're the greatest. Caligula! Today, we shall not have a dancing lesson. We shall have a singing lesson. You will show me how musically you can groan. I never come into here without expecting it to be my last moment on this earth. Poor Claudius. Oh, you're, you're all right. He doesn't come, uh, 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 kill women, at least not many compared with men. Claudius, you're a coward. <laughs> it's well known. You're all cowards. Why doesn't somebody kill Caligula? That's what I'd do if I were a man, instead of just waiting to die. He has the guards. Guards can be killed, too. What with? Swords. How many? You don't remember. Sir Jane has started it all by concentrating all the guards in one barracks here. Oh, you can kill them. If you have an army. If you have a civil war. I, uh... don't have an army. You despise me. Why not? You despise yourself. Yes. Yes. It's all Augustus' fault. Started the whole damn thing. Of having an emperor, of calling him a god, of giving him all the power in the world. Of surrounding him with 10,000 armed men, each sworn to defend him to the death. You despise me even more for blaming other people. Yes. My beautiful cousin, Messalina. Caesar. By far from beautiful Uncle Claudius. Caesar. Tell me, what do you two think of each other, Claudius? As you say, she's very beautiful. Also, as you say. Would you describe Claudius as a shambling, stammering, slobbering old idiot? The description is fairly accurate. Why? I have decided that you two are to marry each other. A Messalini, you're of an age for marriage. It's simply a question of the most suitable husband. Him? Claudius, you've been married twice before, briefly and unfortunately. Very unfortunately. A third time lucky. I'm giving you the prettiest girl in Rome. Thank me. Thank you, Caesar. The royal family must set an example by marrying and procreating, as I have done, not by drinking and whoring, as you have done. Claudius, you must reform your ways. Yes, Caesar. 
Thank me again and kiss my foot. Thank you. The, 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 the great Caesar. Thank me, Messalina. Must I? Thank me and kiss my foot. Gods! Go with her. Make sure she comes to no harm. Claudius, can you support a wife? Yes, just. Think of the money you'll save by giving up your bad habits. Yes. As you must, you are to become a priest. What? Tell it, Lucius. Two temples are to be built in Rome for the worship of the God Emperor. He will adopt as one of his names the name Jupiter, greatest of the gods, chief protector of this city and the empire. Since Jupiter is the thunderer, when there is thunder in the sky, the temples will answer with thunder. When there is lightning, the temples will answer with flashes of lightning. The priests, tell him about the priests. In order to conduct the ceremonies and the sacrifices, a new order of priesthood is being created. Among its first members will be the Emperor himself, the Empress Sisonia. And my horse. The Emperor's horse, Incitatus, and several others of the royal family and the highest nobility in Rome, including myself and you. Um, greatly honoured. We are both honoured beyond our deserts. Yes. Do you accept? With joy. Callistus, uh, tell him about the fee. Each new priest, in return for the honour thus conferred upon him, shall pay to the emperor a fee of ten million sesterces. <laughs> Can you afford it? No, and yeah. Uh, you'll have Messalina's diary. Will it be that much? Nowhere near. Poor Claudius, you'll have to mortgage your country estates. They're mortgaged already. Then you'll have to sell them. Well, it's the same rule for all of us. Sisonia and I are both paying ten millions to the Emperor. I'm ruined. <laughs> You're alive. I apologize for making it such a last-minute invitation, but fool that I am, the thought only just flashed into my mind. May I ask what thought, Caesar? The thought of having you here this evening. Is there something on your mind, Capito? Give Capito more wine. We must try to cheer him up. Caesar is kind. Oh, I tell you what will amuse you. You know your son, Bassus. Oh, what a ridiculous thing to say. Of course you know him. He's your son. Yes. Uh, your health, Capito. Your health, Caesar. You know we arrested him today, your son. Yes, Caesar, I do know that. When I say we, someone here arrested him. Uh, was it you, Korea, my pretty one? No, Caesar. I arrested him, Caesar. Of course. Cornelius Sabinus, the other lovely colonel of my guards. Do you know what the charge was? I do not know that my son has committed any crime. Your son is charged with conspiring to murder me. Caesar, since you are a god and therefore immortal, how is it possible to murder you? Well, I agree it's not possible, but it is possible to conspire. Would you like to see your son? He would like to see his son bring in Bassus. Give Capito more wine.
Greetings, Bassus. And now you see why I invited you. I had already guessed. I like to have some entertainment with my meals. The entertainment this evening consists of Bassus being killed. I didn't want you to miss it. Do please remain in your seat, Capito. Provided I may have permission to close my eyes. If you close your eyes for an instant, I shall have you killed too. You will have me killed in any case. Unless you do what your son has failed to do, despite all persuasion. Reveal the names of his fellow conspirators. And would that save his life too? No, but it would save yours. I deny that there was any conspiracy. Kill Bassus, then Capito. No, wait, wait. There was indeed a conspiracy. To find out whether you were immortal, or a man as capable of dying as other men. I was a member of that conspiracy, and I can tell you the names of all the other members. Tell me the names, and you will be spared. The members... <laughs> <laughs> Members, your dancing master, Mister. What? In revenge for your having him flogged, your flatterer, Lucius Vitellius. Lucius? In revenge for your rape of his bride, your secretary, Callistus. Not true. Who sees safer employment with other men. Your two colonels there. No! Who hate you, Caligula, as I do. Last, your wife, the Empress Sisonia. For reasons that I can only imagine. But can quite easily imagine. <laughs> You spoiled it at the end, Capito. You should have stopped sooner if you wanted to be believed. Kill Bassus, then Capito. With small cuts. I want to feel them dying. I am one man, unarmed. If you hate me, kill me. Go on. If I deserve death, kill me! I'm a loyal servant of the throne. And I. We all are Caesar. I flogged you. Flog me again, I don't care, I love you. Lucius? Caesar. Jupiter, I am your priest. And your pride? You cannot offend me. You are my god. Gods can do no wrong. Callistus? I have no other thought but to be your humble secretary, Caesar. You may all be lying, or some of you, or one of you. No, dearest Caesar. If only one of you wishes me dead. I say again, draw your sword, plunge it into me, prove whether I'm a god or a fraud. But if you love me, watch over me and strike down all traitors. We will, Caesar. Even if they're among those nearest to myself. You may go. Kyria, Cornelius, stay here. Caesar. Great Caesar. Emperor and God. Gentlemen, 
The security of the throne depends on the Praetorian Guards, therefore upon you. I must hope that I can trust you. I must hope above all that you can trust each other. Yes, Caesar. Good night, you lovely things, you rivals for my heart. Oh. Who's in charge of the guard tonight? I am, Caesar. Have I given you the watchword yet? Not yet, Caesar. The watchword is Cupid, because of your mouth. <laughs> We are loyal to the throne? Yes. But who should be on it? not to have been there. So oh, I understand. I felt my head very loose on the shoulders. Don't we all? All. You know, I look round their faces. Each one of them was convinced that his last moment had come. I think I hold the record for the number of last moments. You know, the amazing thing is that when he asked us to kill him, no one did it. Not amazing. No? Tiberius once said, Men are always ready to be slaves. We got used to the idea of being slaves. It's habit for me. You're a student of history? Yes. Men do sometimes break the habit. Sometimes. When the yoke becomes unbearable. Yes. Are you sounding me out? Discussing history. I have lived at the center of history for 50 years. Grandmother Livia bullied me, which is why I stammer. Uncle Tiberius treated me like a fool. Nephew. Uh, Oh, the Caligula humiliates me. With the result that I am no longer capable of any action except of hiding myself and hoping that no one will notice. Now, does that answer your question? If it was a question. <laughs> Going back to last night with Caligula, he did rather openly invite us to spy on one another and report to him if he found that one of us was a traitor. Oh, yes. Even though it was someone nearest to himself. Oh. Well, I think all I'm saying is that it's possible that you yourself may come across someone who is what Caligula would call a traitor. And, uh, I should report to the Emperor? And you should not report to the Emperor. Callistus has the announcements of the new taxes. Here. Forgive me, Caesar, but what have we to do with your new taxes? Everything, my darlings. You are my protectors. I shall need protection. If you read the announcements, you'll see what the Emperor means. He is imposing by imperial decree a tax on the sale of wine and alcoholic drinks, a tax on the license granted to prostitutes, a tax on the income of all artisans, tradesmen and wage-earning slaves. Only because I need the money. Caesar, I am still at a loss. Of course, my dears, but not at a financial loss. No. The Emperor wishes you and your guards to post up the announcements in public places in Rome. But these ones? Yes. The writing's so small, they're barely legible. The Emperor wishes you to post them at such a height that no one can possibly read them. And now you understand? Thereafter, since the payment of these taxes becomes due immediately, the Emperor wishes, the Emperor orders, that they shall be collected by the Praetorian Guard. Who else could possibly do it? Caesar, when the people find out, which they must do, if only at the time of 
of collection. Which is why it must be done by the guards. There's bound to be an outcry. Yes. You have swords. There may be riots. There are 10,000 of you with swords. The emperor is anxious the money should be collected. He is not particularly concerned by the thought of possible deaths. However many I wish that the whole of Rome had only one neck. An interesting political situation. Until now, the emperor has robbed, uh, forgive the word, it's the most convenient, and killed only the wealthy and the aristocratic. He has not yet harmed the man in the street. But now he will? But now he will. And why is that interesting? I'm a student of politics. It creates a new balance of political forces. We are ignorant soldiers. Let me put it like this. The more the emperor taxes the common people, the more they riot. The more you put down their rights by killing them, the more they will turn against the emperor, leaving him politically with only one leg to stand on. Which is? You. We must see how things turn out. Of course. In any case, it's a good start. Korea. Cornelius, you know as well as I do, we must carry out the Emperor's orders. So long as he's in a fit state of mind to give orders. I want to die. But I can't die, I'm immortal. Don't die, or I shall die too. I want to be all of the gods, not just one. Be satisfied. No. I want to burn the world and rise again from the flames. Do it then. I have the power of life and death. Shall I kill all the people in Rome, then bring them back to life, and then kill them again? Except us. Shall I kill you? If it would please you. I shall improvise a five-act tragedy of my own. I shall dance and act it all myself. Yes, dear. We both have two excellent chances of being killed in the very near future. Caligula might kill us. It's very possible. Or someone might kill Caligula and us. For what we are, you is high priest, me is right hand man. Yes. Yes, for a time, the safest position was as close as possible to the Emperor. Now it's the most dangerous. But we can hardly announce we're no longer the Emperor's friends while he's alive and still in power. We can hardly wait till after his death. Assassins with their swords drawn are not good listeners. We assume that Caligula will be killed, sooner or later. We both know Caligula must be killed soon. I agree. I'm not greatly in favour of doing it ourselves. I agree. His successors would applaud us and then put us to death. Therefore, we must be friends, secret friends, with whoever will be the assassin. That's exactly my own thought. You know, I'm so glad we're not discussing patriotic duty or the restoration of democracy. <laughs> we'll do that, but not to each other. So, there's only one question. Who will be the assassin? There's an element of risk in whatever step we take. Will you join me in a risk? If you explain it to me first. I asked Korea to join us. I hear there were more riots in the city today. Yes. And more deaths. Two or three hundred. The guards are in control of the situation. Completely. Tell me, Korea, do you like butchering civilians? No. Tell me, does the mob understand you're doing it on the Emperor's orders? They have grasped that point. I'll join you in the risk. Korea, Lucius and I have been discussing the present grave state of affairs. We feel that it amounts to a national emergency. We feel it is our patriotic duty to put a stop to all this unnecessary bloodshed. We can see no other way of doing this except by the removal of the head of the government. In a word, the Emperor. It is, of course, within your power to report our views to Caligula. Oh, while you're considering your answer, 
The Emperor asked me to tell you his watchword for tonight. It's Lovikins. <laughs> Silence! I shall now improvise a five-act tragedy of my own. Bravo! <laughs> I shall dance and act every part in it myself. <laughs> Following which, I shall invite others present to do the same. The winner of this contest will be the person who has gained the most applause. The winner will be crowned with a laurel wreath and awarded 20 million sesterces from the public treasury. <laughs> the losers will have a choice of cutting their throats or of having them cut by my guards. No one will leave except myself to reappear in costume. My reappearance will be greeted with applause. Guards! Darling, lovely, impossibly beautiful thing. Come and see me put on my costume. Caesar, great Caesar, great God. Still alive.
Claudius. The Senate is waiting to deliberate whether to declare a republic. You must submit yourself to the authority of the Senate and the laws. And you must make the guards submit to the authority of the lords. Order must be restored. Order will be restored. And the ancient laws of Rome be brought into respect again by the emperor and his guards. The Senate may uh, deliberate as much as it pleases. I am the Emperor. Kiss my hand. 